It's the Ross Tucker Football Podcast. Oh, yeah, it is. But it's not just any Ross Tucker Football Podcast. It is a teaching tutorial Thursday presented by DraftKings with the great Greg Cosell. And it is opening night in the National Football League. You know what? I'm going to talk about the Spread the Word winner, sponsor confirmation email winner, YouTube shout out, Madden giveaway later. I like to keep you guys on your toes a little bit. The patron shout out, James Hines. Welcome to the family, James. Patreon.com slash RT Media. A lot of people looking to get those even money bets in black and white. But I'm Big Show time. The Big Show. All right, Greg. Been waiting for this, I don't know, <laughs> eight months, nine months. We've got real games to talk about, and I'm real excited to do that with you. Greg, of course, always available on social media, at Greg Cosell. He also is the executive producer and on-air talent for the NFL Matchup Show, which is back for what, 35th year, Greg? I think it's 35, yeah. We, well, I know... I, no, it's more than that because our first year was 1984, so it's more than that. Awesome. Love it. Uh, but anyway, make sure you check your local listings. Either watch it live or DVR <clears throat> it. Obviously, Greg, we're going to talk about tonight's game and some of the big games this weekend, like the Chiefs and the Browns. Two things that just popped up the last couple of days that I wanted to get your opinion on. The New Orleans Saints have been very active trying to get corners, Greg. I mean, they cut Latavius Murray to sign Desmond Trufant, and then reportedly they're trading for Bradley Roby. And I guess the question is, you know, for for Saints fans, Texans fans, everybody else, Bradley Roby. What what have you seen from Bradley Roby over the years uh, that the Saints felt compelled to trade? We don't even know what they're trading for him, but they're trading something for him to get him in their, in their backfield? Well, Sean Payton has been very vocal about the need for corners. And in this league, if you do not have corners, that can really uh, hurt your team, no matter what the rest of your team is. Roby has always been a high-level traits corner. He's obviously, if, if this trade indeed goes through, he's obviously uh, a guy that's been with a number of teams. I don't know Bradley Roby personally, but even when he came out of Ohio State, there were questions about him uh, off the field, not on the field. On the field, he's a quick twitch, man-to-man corner. They like to play man. Dennis Allen plays a lot of man coverage. We know that. We see what Marshawn Lattimore has done there. And I think they would like to have another quality man-to-man corner on the other side of Lattimore. And Roby fills that role. I think that's exactly it. And, and they obviously have had success with Ohio State guys. So I'm sure that doesn't hurt either. I'll be curious to see what Roby does there in New Orleans. Interesting. I mean, I'll talk about this later, but interesting message for the Texans to send to their locker room. The only other thing before we get into these games, Greg, the only other transaction that I wanted to ask you about, Le'Veon Bell yeah, signing with the Baltimore Ravens. Now, for right now, he's on the practice squad. I, I guess – a couple thoughts there, Greg. I don't know how much you saw of Le'Veon last year in Kansas City to see how much he had left. That's number one. And number two, you know, Greg, my immediate reaction was Le'Veon Bell in the Ravens offense. Like when I think of the Ravens running game, I think, boom, hitting it, downhill, go. Go where Greg Roman tells you to go and hit it now, <laughs> like a Gus Edwards or whatever. And right. that feels like the antithesis of what I've ever seen Le'Veon Bell do. So maybe I'm wrong. If I just wanted to get your opinion quick. Well, I don't know if we know what Le'Veon Bell is right now. He really hasn't been in the league in any meaningful role in quite some time. Um, I guess a couple of years ago, he did play meaningful snaps for the Jets and did not look like the same player. So we don't really know what Le'Veon Bell is at this point in his career. But your point's a good one. The way they, the Ravens run their offense – with the with Jackson Lamar Jackson being the foundation of the offense as a runner, it's it's not a traditional run game in a strict sense. And their backs hit it and go, or if there are perimeter runs, I mean, for instance, Dobbins is out for the year, but they had a really cool concept to get him on the perimeter, which is not really Le'Veon Bell's game at this point in his career. So 
I'm not sure exactly how that works and how it fits, uh, but the, I'm sure they're looking for backs. We know Dobbins is out. Justice Hill is out. So they just need bodies. Correct. They need somebody there. Yep. Um, I, the Cowboys have a bunch of bodies. Uh, they will be without Zach Martin tonight. Connor McGovern, the third-year man from Penn State, will get the start at right guard. It's opening night, Greg. Uh, just curious on some of the things that you'll be looking for and that interest you in this matchup tonight. Well, I'm really fascinated to see the Cowboys offense because my sense is uh, that with their three real quality wide receivers that you're going to see a lot more movement. You know, last year we predominantly saw Michael Gallup as the boundary X. Uh, Amari Cooper as the movement Z and C.D. Lamb in the slot. I would expect tonight uh, with, with a full off season that you'll see those receivers in, in multiple locations. I don't think it'll be as cut and dried as it was a year ago. You could make the argument that C.D. Lamb is the most talented of the three receivers, and I think you'll see him line up in different locations, uh, and I'm curious to see how that plays out. I personally think Dak Prescott is just in the four and a half games he played last year, I thought he was terrific. I watched all those games, all his dropbacks. I think his development over four years in the league has been really, really fun to watch. So I guess my question is, why do you think if they didn't do it last year, they're going to be moving these guys all around the place this year? It's the same offensive coordinator, right? Yeah, I think Lamb is the is a player that you can move. Um, he did that in college. Uh, he was in the slot. He was out wide. I think it's just a way to do more things, be more multiple with, with your looks, which then forces the defense to have to think through things and figure out what you're going to do from each specific alignment and different splits with your receivers. So I think they're just – look, every year, you know this, Ross, every year coaches look to expand and tweak on both sides of the ball. So I, I think that's something you are going to see the Cowboys do. It's uh, a new season for the Tampa Bay Bucks as well. What's the thing you're going to be looking at when they have the ball? Well, you know, I think the big question for the Cowboys on defense is their secondary. And I, I assume, we don't know this, I guess, I assume Diggs and Anthony Brown would be the starting corners and Jordan Lewis would be the slot corner. But one thing when I studied a ton of Tom Brady and the Bucks passing game, this summer, one thing I saw a lot of is they played matchup football. They would line up with 12 personnel and the defense, and that's two tight ends, and the defense would stay base. And what they would do is have they, they'd have two wide receivers, and they've got three really good ones, and they'd have those wide receivers in plus splits. And because the defense normally would play single high safety, which is, by the way, Dan Quinn's MO. He's the new coordinator in Dallas. And then you get matchups on the perimeter. And they did that an awful lot. I was actually surprised in going back and watching Tom Brady this summer, how much they threw the ball to the outside, just one-on-one -on -one matchups that they feel really good about. Mike Evans, Chris Godwin, Antonio Brown. Those are tough matchups one-on-one -on, -one on the perimeter. All right, let's move on, Greg, to some of these games on Sunday. Um, there's a bunch of interesting ones. What about the Chargers and Washington? Huh. You know, one of the closest lined games. Obviously, two teams that a lot of people are excited about this year. What will you be looking for there? That could be a little old school. Uh, you know, uh, we know the Redskins, excuse me, we know Washington's defense is very, very good. Their front four is arguably the best in the league. Uh, I'll be very curious to see what the Chargers' approach is. It's a revamped O line, as you well know. But the Washington football team's defense is very, very good. And uh, obviously we know that uh, Herbert did not play a snap in the preseason. I, I would think that this will be a struggle for both offenses in this game. I think we're looking at much more of an old school game. Interesting. So you feel that good about the defense for both teams? Well, we know about Washington. Uh, they're very, very good. I think you'll see Washington, as the season progresses, play more man coverage. They signed uh, William Jackson in the offseason. He's a man-to-man -man corner more than his own corner, in my opinion, based on tape. I think you'll see them make the transition to play a little more man-to-man -man coverage. Doesn't mean they'll get totally away from zone, because I think Ron Rivera, ultimately his background, 
he's been, and Jack Del Rio is the, the DC, but I think ultimately, you know, if you look at uh, Ron Rivera's background, it's been a lot a zone, a lot of cover four quarters, but I think you'll see them play more man coverage simply because of the players they have. What about Greg? Um, I want to get to Seattle and Indianapolis. And I guess in particular, what do you think Frank Reich will do with Carson Wentz to try to get him back on track? It appears Wentz <laughs> will play on Sunday. Yeah. That's going to be a, a very interesting to watch. We just don't know. I mean, obviously, he knows Carson Wentz. Last year, down the stretch, they, they were a running team. The foundation was the run game. Jonathan Taylor became the foundation. He was getting 18, 19, 20 plus carries. Oh, pretty much over the last, what, six, seven weeks, Ross, if I, if I remember correctly. Uh, I think what they'll try to do is force Wentz with the play calling to become more rhythmic. Because one thing we saw with Carson Wentz over these last couple of years is Wentz is is a quarterback that likes to make plays. And and I, I don't say that as a cliche. What I say that as is he holds the ball. He's a, he has a playmaking mindset. And there's a negative to that, as we've seen over the last couple of years. And it would not surprise me to see their pass game be very defined, quicker drops, get the ball out. So, so that Wentz can get into some kind of rhythm because you do not want him playing outside of structure. Even though he can be very good at that, you need to get him comfortable and in rhythm first. Interesting. Yeah, I, I, I'll, you know, I've seen some quotes from Reich where he still talks about how he and Carson Wentz are butting heads a little bit because Carson's stubborn and he wants to do it. I mean – Right. That was the same MO that we heard in Philadelphia all the time. It's it's very interesting that Reich is saying that and it's and saying it out loud. No, you're right, saying it publicly, which means again, what I said, I could be right, I could be wrong. We're not there, but my guess is that what I said factors into the, maybe the butting of the heads a little bit. What about Arizona and Tennessee? Another I I sneaky, interesting matchup. Very interesting. Two things stand out to me. Number one, I think you're going to see Arizona play a lot with 10 personnel, one back, four wide. I think that was a focus of what they did in the offseason, signing A.J. Green and drafting Rondell Moore out of Purdue. And I, I'm not sure how Tennessee will match up to that. And um, I think the second thing is because a Arizona is a little uncertain at the corner position, how will Tennessee approach offense under new coordinator Todd Downing? Will they stay with base personnel, run Henry? Of course, they'll run Henry. I'm not saying they're not going to, but will they stay that as a true stay with that as a true foundation, or will they feel, based on the fact that Arizona has definite questions at corner, and I'm not even sure who their slot corner will be as we're speaking now, will they line up more in three wide? You can obviously run the ball out of three wide, but just it gives them an opportunity to, to force Arizona into their nickel sub, and how will they match up? Then let's get to Pittsburgh and Buffalo, Greg. I think a lot of people are curious about Pittsburgh's offensive line as much as anything else, and I saw where Roethlisberger said this week the offense will be a work in progress to start. I don't know how I feel about that. I mean, maybe he's just trying to lower the expectations, but that's what he said. Well, my sense is that the offense will be different. I don't think they'll be asking Big Ben to drop back 40, 45 times by choice, Ross. You don't draft Najee Harris to give him the ball eight times. He's a volume runner. He's a sustaining back. Uh, I think that their offense will work through him. I think their pass game will have more play action elements to it than it did a year ago. Uh, and again, we don't know how it will work, but I think that will be their fundamental template because Najee Harris is there. You know, like I said, you, you, he's not a scat back. You don't draft him just to give him a few shots here and there. What about uh, when Buffalo has the ball? Well, Buffalo is fascinating. You know, we have a template for this matchup because they played week 14 a year ago, which doesn't mean they'll do the same thing. But Pittsburgh was very aggressive last year, blitz, man coverage. One thing I think you'll see Buffalo do, which they did the second highest percentage in the league last year behind Arizona is line up with four wide, um, 10 personnel, one back, four wide. Uh, and I think uh, 
uh, Josh Allen was extremely efficient out of that personnel package. He completed 75% of his passes in 100 attempts out of that personnel package. And that's not a, a small sample size. That's a meaningful sample size. Yeah, you got that right. What about what I think is the game of the weekend, Greg? It is the Cleveland Browns at the Kansas City Chiefs potential AFC championship, <laughs> a, a rematch of the divisional round a year ago. Yeah, we have a template for that as well. I mean, uh, obviously, uh, that was the game Mahomes got hurt. But, uh, you know, one of the things we saw from the Browns is they played a lot of, of cover four, uh, a lot of quarters coverage. Uh, the, you have to be able to stop when you play the Chiefs. They line up in what we call one by three sets as opposed to three by one. The reason it's called one by three is because the tight end is the single receiver to the boundary side of the formation, and that's Kelsey. And then in addition to that, what they do in that look is they put Tyree Kill as the inside slot to the three receiver side. And that's very, very difficult to match up to. In fact, they scored a touchdown in that game a year ago to Kelsey. Denzel Ward was actually matching him up when he was the single receiver and Kelsey just killed him. Um, so that that's something you have to be able to match up to when you play the Chiefs. And it's very, very difficult. What about on the other side? Yeah, Steve Spagnuolo is very aggressive. He's going to blitz. Um, one thing we know that the Browns do extremely well is they run the ball. They're a play action team and they do some really interesting things off play action. They try to mess with the rules of second level defenders with their, their outside zone run action and what looks like designed boot designed, uh, play action boot, but it's not really. It just looks like that, and that messes with the rules of second level defenders who have defined rules to play boot. So they're very, very good at that. I think you'll see them do that. But but Steve Spagnuolo will blitz. Uh, that's his M.O. He did it a ton last year, and he'll do it again. Got to get your thoughts, Greg, on the Dolphins and the Patriots. Obviously, coaching staffs that know each other well. Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm very intrigued by what these teams do. Yeah, the, the the fascinating matchup to me is the is the Patriots offense, Dolphins D. Dolphins are a very difficult defense to play against. A lot of movement before the snap, a lot of multiple front looks, um, show blitz, don't blitz, show blitz, come, show blitz from one side, come from the other side. They caused a lot of problems for veteran quarterbacks a year ago. Jared Goff had an incredibly difficult time with them a year ago. Uh, obviously, I don't believe the Patriots by choice are going to want Mac Jones to drop back 35 or 40 times. I think they'll probably be a run-based offense. They'll line up with two tight ends. They've got a, a good number of backs they feel very comfortable with, but we'll see how the game plays out. But they are going to have to throw it, and you are going to get into long yardage. So I think this is a really intriguing first game for Mac Jones. Check him out on social media, at Greg Cosell. Check out the NFL matchup show. Oh, you know what, Greg? I got to ask you about Saints and Packers. Saints uh, and Packers, last one. Sorry. Um, well, you know, again, it, it's hard to speak about the Saints because of Jameis Winston, so we don't know exactly what Sean Payton will do. So we'll leave that side alone. The other side is a little more defined. We know what Aaron Rodgers is. We know what they want their offense to look like. Dennis Allen loves to play a lot of man coverage. I'm really anxious to see the the man to man matchups in this game. My guess is Lattimore will will travel with uh, Devonte Adams, and I think that's one of the best matchups of the weekend. Yeah, that'll be awesome. Thank you, Greg. Thanks, Ross. The other thing everybody needs to check out is these shorts and shirts from Ten Thousand Dot CC. I've been talking about them all week. I wear them all the time now. You know, it's like in life. You think you're wearing something comfortable. You think you're wearing something that's good for working out until you wear something that's really designed for working out. I mean, it's got the odor protection, the no bounce pockets, breathable, and they've got specific shorts for specific workouts. Like they know what the different people's workouts are. Short runs, I might do that next couple of days up at West Point, tough gym days. Yoga, mobility, absolutely awesome. There's a reason why they have over 10,000 five-star reviews. 
10,000, speaking of 10,000, is offering our listeners 15% off your purchase. Go to 10,000.cc and enter code Ross Tucker to receive 15% off your purchase. That is 10,000.cc and enter code Ross Tucker. Remember, after you do, send me an email, ross at rostucker.com, forward me the email and say, I want the Madden. And ask a question if you have a question. Tux takes. Morning, Ross. Well, let's start with the Texans. They uh, the trade starting cornerback Bradley Roby to the New Orleans Saints. Right. Greg and I talked about that. I, I think I want to talk about it from a couple of different perspectives. So this is kind of the former player's perspective, right? You know, if you're a Saints player, you're like, all right, man. You know, Breeze isn't here. But they still think we are we got a shot to do some big things. They're still trying to help us do some big things. Signing Desmond Trufant, you know, trading for Bradley Roby. He's suspended for week one, by the way. But getting him back after this, I, I think if you're a Saints player, you appreciate the fact that your organization clearly thinks you're capable of doing some big things this year. You don't make trades like this otherwise. As for the Texans, it's really the exact opposite message. It's really a message like, yeah, guys, sorry. Uh, we're more worried about the future. And I know a lot of people, I tweeted that yesterday, Bri, at Ross Tucker NFL. We're at Ross Tucker Pod. Love those of you that spread the word via social media, by the way. And you can win something tomorrow, literally, if you do that. And people are like, oh, I think they kind of knew that when they said they were starting to Rod Taylor at quarterback. You know, Terod Taylor is, to use a Greg Cosell expression, a professional quarterback. He's been the guy with the ones throughout. And the guys in the locker room know that they know the deal with Deshaun Watson, right? Like they know, okay, Watson's not playing. He wants tra he wants to be traded. Obviously, he's got the off the field stuff. Like they know the deal. I feel like this situation with trading your starting corner before the first game, that sends a very different message. You know, you're in the locker room, you're preaching, guys, give me everything you got, put your bodies on the line to win football games for the Houston Texans, yet the organization is showing with this move, they're not really trying to win this year. I mean, look, I'm not saying they're trying to lose, but they're not really trying to win. They're not really concerned about winning. And I think that's a very tough message to send as a first-time head coach and David Culley and just as an organization in general. I'm not saying they did the wrong thing. They probably did the right thing. Let's see what the compensation is. And Roby's making a lot of money. So they probably did the right thing. But sends a heck of a message to the veterans. And there's a lot of them in that locker room. Tux Takes. Brian O'Neill signs a big contract extension with the Minnesota Vikings. The Minnesota Vikings, it's been an unbelievable offseason for right tackles. Just incredible. I mean, all of these guys, Ramchek and Taylor Moten, and I'm thrilled for Brian O'Neill. And, you know, the Vikings have had a lot of swings and misses along the offensive line. It's kind of nice that they actually, you know, hit on one, and I think – they're so excited about it. They wanted to get Brian O'Neill locked up. Tux takes. Baltimore Ravens sign running back Trenton Cannon to their active roster. So what I think is going on here is I think that Trenton Cannon is on the active roster for Monday night's game. And then maybe they'll bump Le'Veon Bell up shortly after that. They just don't want to guarantee his full salary by having him on the active roster week one if, in case he doesn't have it anymore, in case it's not a good fit. Like, quite frankly, Greg and I don't think it's a good fit. Trenton Cannon, pretty good on special teams. So they'll have Edwards and this Tyshawn Williams to run the ball on Monday night. Trent Cannon will be the number three if they need him and on special teams. And then my guess is they'll bump up Le'Veon Bell after this week. They just didn't want to guarantee his salary. Tux takes. 
Last but definitely not least, there's a game tonight, Cowboys and the Bucks. Who do you like and why? Well, I like the Bucks because the Bucks won the Super Bowl. They have all their starters back. They appear to be healthy. I think the only one I'm not sure about, I think Jordan Whitehead at safety is out. But Chris Godwin, I believe, practiced yesterday. And, man, a lot of hype coming from Tampa these days. A lot of hype. I mean, people seem to think that they'll be better than last year. Brady could have a career year. I mean, there's a lot of interesting comments being thrown about. I don't know about all that, but I do know, especially with Zach Martin out for the Cowboys, that's not good. Although I think Connor McGovern is a very capable backup and fill-in starter. He's still not Zach Martin. So uh, I think the Bucs, I think we're all curious to see Amari Cooper, to see Dak Prescott, to see just how healthy some of these guys in the Cowboys are. Can Lyle Collins make it through the game with the stinger issue? So I think there's a, a bunch of different things that people are looking to check out tonight. It just There's a lot of questions on the Cowboys' end. There's not as many on the Bucks' end. Curious to see what Micah Parsons can do tonight for the Dallas Cowboys, a uh, guy that was on the show this offseason from, from right here in Harrisburg. But I like the Bucks to win the game. I don't think it's an overly high-scoring game I'll say um, 27-17, 27-20, maybe 30-20, to 20, something like that. But as you can tell, that's why I liked the under on the Even Money podcast. It's also one of the reasons why I like Raycon wireless earbuds. I already have them, so I'm leaving today to drive up to West Point. I've got Western Kentucky and army at 11 30 a.m actually 11 30 on saturday morning cbs sports network i already have my raycon everyday earbuds packed ready to go so no matter what i'm doing if i'm doing a workout outside if i'm doing a workout in the gym whatever it is in the fitness it has 32 hour battery life which is amazing i don't even have to bring a charger I've already charged it, and I'm ready to go all weekend long. Plus, Raycons come with a 45-day happiness guarantee. So you really can't lose. Give them a try. You'll see what I mean. See if you like them. You will. I love mine. Create your own soundtrack with Raycon. Right now, my listeners can get 15% off their Raycon order at buyraycon.com slash Tucker. That's buyraycon.com slash Tucker to save 15% on Raycons. Buyraycon.com slash Tucker. Let's get to an email, Bri. Ever wanted to ask an NFL player a question? Well, well here's, here's your, your chance. chance. It's time to ask Ross. Email address always Ross at Ross Tucker.com. You take advantage of any sponsor. Send it to me. First of all, you might be you might win the sponsor confirmation email winner, and you might get a signed press pass or card or picture, or whatever. But second of all, you get to ask me any question you want. What do you got, Brian? Hey, Ross. I uh, bought flowers for my girlfriend. It's going to be forty on August the tenth. Obviously, this was sent a little while ago. Uh, we used it through your website at one hundred flowers dot com using your code football. Question: I see people like Trevor Lawrence, Russell Wilson, and even if I go old school, Philip Rivers getting married right out of college. And my thought is, why would you do that? Why would you not wait until well into your career to do that? One, you're only 21 or 22. Two, the likelihood that it works is low, so why rush it? Plus, now you have money. Now you got to protect it. Hopefully, they had a prenup and go have some fun, maybe. So being that you were in the NFL, what advice would you give future draft picks looking to get married straight out of college? That is from Lem. So, uh, Lem, I understand the question, although, you know, some people thought that my wife and I got married early. I was 26. She was 25. Um, I can tell you from my perspective, I knew she was the person I wanted to marry and she felt the same. And it felt like we were really just delaying the inevitable if we waited anymore. She was in New York City with her job. I was in first Washington, then Dallas, then Buffalo. And Lem, we just, we were tired of long distance. I mean, we had been dating for four years and had never been within 100 miles of each other. 
So that's my example. That's my story. As for these guys, I think a lot of these guys, Trevor Lawrence, Philip Rivers, these are high school sweethearts. They've been dating them for a long time. They're not going to marry anybody else. They're not going to date anybody else. So I think they figure, why wait? Some people have strong beliefs uh, when it comes to, you know, living with your significant other before marriage. Um, you know, some people have different, uh, a lot of different beliefs, you know, related to things with marriage and religion. And so I guess that's, that's the answer to you, Lem. I, I believe that's the answer. And my advice would be, um, man, I don't know. I don't know if I have really good advice there. I guess my advice would be, uh, you know, do what you think is right. I know a lot of people that get married early and it ends up being a disaster. I know a lot of people that get married early and they're doing great, especially some of the, a lot of the high school sweethearts. So I don't know, man. I, I don't know that there's a rhyme or reason to when you're getting married. If you're not going to date other people, then I, I guess I don't really see what, what the point is of waiting. Shout-outs to Pizza Boy Brewing, Sportaculture, Vision Comics with an X, HumanHeadNYC.com, SteakhouseSports.com. Remember, we are giving away a free Madden tomorrow, and you can still get it. Manscaped.com, use the code FEAST20, or 10,000.cc, use the code Ross Tucker, or both. I think we're done here. Thanks for listening to the Ross Tucker Football Podcast. Make sure to also subscribe to the Fantasy Feast, Even Money, Business of Sports, and College Draft. All available at Apple Podcasts, RossTucker.com, or wherever podcasts can be found. A lot of times on the show, I mention DraftKings. Here's what you need to know. you got to be 21 or older, New Jersey, Indiana, or Pennsylvania only. New customers only. Restrictions apply. See DraftKings.com slash sportsbook for details. Gambling problem? Call 100Gambler or in Indiana, 109WITHIT. By the way, if what I was talking about included a deposit bonus, doesn't always, sometimes it does. Deposit bonus requires 25 times playthrough, and deposit bonuses are paid out in site credit.